Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at the new Broadwell-based Intel Nook, uh, the 5i3RYH. So this is the i3 HD5500 graphics based model, uh, with support for a 2.5 inch thickness hard drive, SSD or hard drive, as well as the M2 SSD slot. Um, so if we take a look here, and you can see they've redesigned the package to make it a bit taller but a bit smaller footprint um, and they say what's needed DDR3 1600 low voltage 1.35 volts memory your SSD and your operating system and on the back we've got pictures of the port layout here also emphasizing 4k movies and 4 inches square obviously Intel see this as a bit of a media device so let's get things unwrapped and take a look what's inside. As we unwrap that, the top lifts off the box and on the top we have our nook, a quick start guide, some information on BIOSes, where we can find SSDs, some information, special offer McAfee trial, that will be going in the bin, a visa mount, and in the bottom here, our power supply. That's interesting, compared to, so I have a previous generation Nook power supply here, so they've shrunk down that a lot, uh, it's FSP branded this time, and we also have a selection of different AC adapters to go on there, so rather than being on the two pin lead, I'm guessing here we have yeah, a small cover, and we connect the suitable plug onto this, so that's European there, and these slide on and off to suit your region. Now comparing the new model here on the left with my previous generation D5 4250WYK Nook, we can see there are a few small differences in the, uh, the looks of the device. The ports, including the USB ports and the audio jack on the front have all been moved a bit closer together and put on a single black strip. Um, obviously my previous device was just an MSATA based nook so it's a bit shorter but they did a equivalent version which would take the 2.5 inch hard drives which would be a similar height to this. Um, looking around on the sides we see there are some additional vents here for cooling. Um, one thing I did notice on the previous generation look, it could get a little hot and a little loud at times. Um, I haven't checked if the uh, M2 version of this has that as well, uh, but it looks like they've introduced it to add some more cooling on it. On the back we have a similar selection of ports, so we have mini display port on both, two USB ports, uh, USB 3 ports there and Ethernet and again the cooling ducts for the uh, processor cooler. What we also have here is you can see they've set in the HDMI connector, uh, sorry the mini HDMI connector. On the previous generation Nook there was actually a bit of a flaw in the design in that as you can see when we're plugging in our adapter the thickness of the chassis means we can't push it in all the way. Uh, this would sometimes lead to some intermittent connections. Um, on mine I really had to push it in hard before the TV would recognise the connection. On here, because they've made that cut out, it's much easier to get that into the so slot. And again, on this side we can see further venting here, um, presumably to help cool the 2.5 inch drive, uh, but also to just give a bit more airflow through the device. Another change on these new Broadwell base nooks, we can see first of all we've got this sort of metal effect power button as opposed to black on the previous models. 
and also this lid to the device if we pry in through these little slots on the back and then lift this So the lid now can be removed. Um, I believe Intel are giving out sort of 3D printing uh, instructions for this as well, so you can print your own lid designs if you want to customise it. And I think there's also the potential for some other accessories like wireless charging, which may be introduced in the future. Um, so interesting that they're continuing to sort of evolve what they offer on the Nook. Um, for now though, I'll be leaving that as standard. As for getting inside the Nook, this is basically the same as on previous generations. We have these four screws on the base. These appear to be retained. So I Doing those, we should be able to lift the base up. We have some connections to the base here, so we just have to lift that out the way. So that is because we have the SATA connector here. Obviously, with an M2 model, this wouldn't be the case. So by unplugging the SATA connector there and then the power connector here, we can remove that lid completely. We can also see, as with previous generations, there's a thermal strip here. In this case, this is to contact the M2 SSD to help move some heat from that into the chassis. And if we look inside, we have the memory slots and the wireless card is here. Unlike previous models, this isn't removable. It's integrated into the motherboard. We can now install our SSD. Now these slots are keyed. So you'll see this way round, we cannot fit it in. This way round, it slides neatly into place. And using a small screwdriver, can fix that into place and then our two memory modules here bottom one first obviously as the raise the second slot will block access to the first so with a pair of modules installed there and all that remains to be done is to reconnect the SATA power and SATA data ports. And um, we're not installing a drive at the moment, but if you were to want to do that, you simply slide the drive in through here, and it pushes into the port on the caddy, and then screws in at the end here. But we are going to leave that out for now. So we reconnect the power, and the data connectors there, push back down on the base, screw that down. And with that, our Nook is ready for a software install. I hope you found this video useful and be sure to check on our channel for more guides uh, and videos featuring the Nook and other hardware. Thanks for watching.